Have you ever wanted to build an AI powered agent that can retrieve live data, answer questions in real time? Whether you're a developer, data scientist, or just curious about AI, then this video is for you. I'm Jack Pierce, Solutions Architect at DigitalOcean. What if you could build an agent that connects to APIs and delivers real-time answers? With DigitalOcean's Gen AI platform, it makes it easy to build AI agents that can fetch and process data dynamically without needing any complex infrastructure. So in this demo, I'll show you how to create an agent that pulls information from an API and intelligently responds to queries, giving you the power to build more interactive and informed AI solutions. So let's jump into it. There's a few different products we're gonna use in this example. And what we'll do is we'll build an agent that can answer questions based on your own DigitalOcean account. Things like, what droplets do I have? What are the droplet IDs? What's their current status? Things like that. And we're gonna retrieve that data from the DigitalOcean API in real time. So we're gonna use the Gen AI platform, which is a brand new product from DigitalOcean. It lets you build AI agents and they're production ready. With the Gen AI platform, it's really easy to build an AI agent. You can implement RAG pipelines, so you can upload your own knowledge base and have the agent answer questions on that knowledge base. You can also incorporate functions. So this is where a block of code that you define can go out and perform a function and return data in real time to the agent. So that's what we're gonna to do today. So we're gonna use the Gen AI platform and we're gonna use DigitalOcean's functions, which are, uh, it's a serverless way of running code. It supports a number of different languages. So you can run Go, Node.js, PHP, or Python. We're gonna use Python in this example. The first thing I want to do is prepare my function. So this is where, so this is the piece of code that will be run, that the language model can call and it can return results to the language model. So I'll come into functions in the control panel and click on create namespace. So we just need a new namespace. We'll select a data center um, that the function will run from. In this example, I'm just going to do Toronto and we'll just create it with the default name that it gives it. So now what I want to do is develop this function from my local machine. We need the DOCTL command line tool to do this. So let's do DOCTL serverless uh, connect and it'll ask us which namespace do we want to connect to. I am going to select the namespace in Toronto that we just created. So that is number one. And now I want to initialize a sample project that I can use and I can reference. So we can just run this command here, DOCTL serverless and that will initialize a example Python project. And we could then deploy it with this command. So let's open this example project in our code editor. So let's, there, there's gonna be some elements here that make up our project and I'll include this uh, sample in a repository so you can go ahead and copy it. So the first thing we want to do is uh, modify our project file. Here we're just defining the Python runtime we're setting um, a header so that the function can only be called using this this header secured this token in the header. Um, we're going to define uh, our DigitalOcean API token so that the function can access our account and get information about droplets. Next thing I'm going to do is create an environment files, and we're just going to put our DigitalOcean API token in here. And I'm just going to get rid of this hello world sample and I'm gonna replace it with API function. And our API function looks a bit like this. So it's just some Python code that will go and retrieve droplets from our account. This is just an example in your instance, you would go ahead and write something for your own API. So retrieving data from your own API, using droplets as a easy example. If you're familiar with the DigitalOcean API, you'll recognize this. Let's save that. I'm also going to create a build script. The build script 
needs to look like this if you're using the Python 3.11 runtime. And the build script allows us to import our Python dependencies. So we will put our Python dependencies in this requirements text file here. There are certain Python libraries that are included and that you won't need to uh, build. Those are included in our documentation. So that's what the structure of the function needs to look like in order to be functional. And then we'll go ahead and deploy that. That will build, that will send the function to the cloud and build it so that it's ready to be used. And once that's finished, we can come back in and access our function from the web interface and we can just run it from here and test that it's running without any kind of error. So that's running, you can see it's returned here, um, some information about the droplets in my account. So that's excellent. And just to give you a more practical example of how this function works, if we were to call the function like this, so we'll just do a get request against um, our function like this. Obviously we're including our secret header ID so that the function can only be accessed if we have this ID. We'll see that the function returns information about our droplets and then if we were to add a droplet id parameter it will return information just about that individual droplet the next thing that i'm going to do is create an agent so let's come into here and click on create agent i will call it droplet agent agent instructions this is like the system prompt we're going to feed the language model and tell it how to act, what its purpose is. We have some examples in our documentation. So I, ha I haven't spent an awful lot of time on this prompt, I'll admit. It could definitely be better, but it works. I would advise what you can do is you can feed into a language model what you're trying to achieve and have it generate the prompt for you. I find that works quite well. But this one's just really simple. You're a helpful assistant that provides information about DigitalOcean customer accounts. I'm going to choose the Llama 3.370B model. I'm not going to attach a knowledge base. If I was building an agent that perhaps answered questions on some internal documentation that I had, I could upload that documentation and the agent would be able to reference it when it when it gives its answers but we don't need to do that for now so let's just create that agent it's literally as simple as that and then what i want to do is go to my agent playground the agent playground is where i can mess around with the prompt i can change the settings like the temperature the max tokens and the changes take effect instantly so I don't have to wait for it to deploy. I can then ask my language model some questions and I can tweak my prompt or my temperature until I get the results that I need. So it's a really quick and fast way to iterate over getting the agent to where you want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask it, what droplets do I have in my account? Now we're not expecting it to know, how would it know? So it's just gonna give me instructions on how to get that information from my DigitalOcean account, fine. So now what we need to do is link our function that we built earlier to our agent. So we'll come into the resources tab and in here, this is where we can attach knowledge bases, guardrails, we can route to other agents if we have an agent that's designed for a specific task. So we're gonna add a function route. I select my namespace and my function that I deployed earlier. For function instructions, I have this. So it's call this function when the user asks about their DigitalOcean dro droplets, virtual machines, instances, or servers. Use this function to retrieve information about one or more droplets in a DigitalOcean account. So we will call this function droplets. Now we need to define an input schema and an output schema. An input schema is, we have an example here. So if our function was retrieving information from the weather, the language model will then send these as parameters to our function. And if our function is configured to accept these parameters, 
it will be able to retrieve the data. So in this example, my input schema looks like this. So the main one here is droplet ID. So we're not saying that it's required because if we don't specify it, our function will just retrieve the list of droplets in the account. But if we do, it will use the droplet ID parameter when it calls the function and retrieve information about that specific droplet. Then we define our output schema and our output schema helps the language model understand the output that the function will return and how to interpret it and then use it in its response. So in this example, I've got droplets, it's a string, and the description is JSON string containing list of droplet information. So we'll go ahead and add that function to our agent. So that's now been added. So we go back to our playground and we ask the question again, what droplets do I have in my account? We'll see that this time the agent is able to answer, you have a total of seven droplets in your account and it lists them out for me. Excellent. So I want to know more information about this droplet here. Tell me more about droplet 42819747457. So there we go. And it's, and it's now returned all the information about this droplet. Droplet is named conductor console. It's off, it's in London. Here's its OS uh, tags that are applied when it was created. And it's retrieving this information real time from the DigitalOcean API. I hope you found that useful today. Uh, this is just a very quick example of how you can build an agent and how it can retrieve information from an API in real time. It was super, super quick and easy to get this set up. I just think this is such a powerful platform. I will include all of my example code in a Git repository and I'll link that so that you can use it as a reference if you want to give this a go. Thank you very much.